So this video is about Michael and he is the first guy I dated when I moved back to Florida. Um, and that is not his real name. Um, but it seems like Southern families um, will just change your name. Like, you know, he came home from the hospital and your auntie didn't like your name. So they just like change it right then and there. But like, not legally. <laughs> I don't know. Southern families will straight up give you a whole nother name. Like, it's so crazy. Um, my sisters included, um, I don't remember my brother has a nickname, but um, my grandma is, one of my grandmothers is from Atlanta, and one of my grandmothers is from um, Alabama. So, like, we all had nicknames too, but mine didn't really stick, thank the Lord Jesus. Um, <laughs> but Southern families will straight give you a whole nother name for no reason. <laughs> it's like a rite of passage for you to get a nickname um, or a whole nother name in this case um, because that is not Michael's real name. Um, I don't know, it could be his middle name, but I know it's not his first name, so I'm using it. Um, but yeah, tune in for that. Welcome back to my channel for my fourth video. Um, I actually already have a thousand watch minutes on my first few videos and that is so super exciting. Um, so I do need more followers of course so um, if you haven't already click that subscribe button um, and subscribe to my channel for more videos. Um, next week's video is going to be really really super emotional so you don't want to miss that. So once you hit the subscribe button also hit that bell button so that you will get alerted when I have new videos coming out, which is going to be every Monday. Um, today is a rainy Sunday morning and I'm starting to feel a little bit better um, with this nasty cold that I had. Like, summer colds are the worst. Like, it's already hot and gross outside and you got to be blowing your nose every five seconds. Um, so that was pretty, <laughs> pretty annoying to say the very least. And then I think I had a fever, I was having night sweats, and it was pretty bad. Um, so that's just an update <laughs> on how I'm doing from last week. And, um, this video is gonna be about Michael, and, um, he is the first guy I dated once I moved to Florida. So to pick back up from my last video, um, Shwoopy Whoopy and Bear, um, were driving me absolutely nuts with just everything that was going on all the time with them. And um, I had pretty much had enough. I felt like I really didn't have um, the best support system in Buffalo, aside from I have great friends. Um, even my friends' parents were great, you know. Some of them were like, you can live with us, and you know. Um, so that was really, truly amazing. Um, but I mean, there's really nothing like your own family. And since um, half of my immediate family had already moved to Florida, it was pretty much just me and my brother. Um, and his family and so it just really got to be too much with Bear and Chwoopy Whoopy and then just like a lack of support and comfort. I mean I was 20 years old and all this crap was going on around me. Um, I wasn't doing good in school. I enrolled in Buff State. Um, <laughs> I was doing horrible there because I was working full time and I really just wasn't devoting the proper amount of time to study and it was like you know high school you know like well do you really have to study that hard to do well um evidently do um so <laughs> college kids out there yes you do need to study to do well in college um it's definitely different than high school so I moved to Florida with my parents in the hopes that, you know, I'm going to start school again and, you know, I don't have to pay them rent. I'm just going to get a job. I'm just going to, you know, stack my money and, you know, just do everything I needed to do, which um, for the most part was the case once I got there. It took me probably about a year and a half to two years to get back into school um you know there's the whole residency issue so i had to wait for that um and then we moved and then you know things got messed up with that and so it was just a, a couple of different things that went on um during that time but so yay it's 2000 and 
three and I moved to Florida to get away from Chwoopy Whoopy and Bear and all of my adulting problems that at 20 years old I had no idea how to deal with. So um, it wasn't a horrible experience this time around, you know, because I knew I was there for the long haul so I kind of prepared my mind and I already knew what I was kind of getting in for and like I said like Florida is beautiful I will not take that away from Florida Florida is beautiful especially the part of Florida I live in you know like absolutely amazing you know just stuff you see in movies if you've never been here you know and that's all fine and good <laughs> but I don't know I mean I'm a buffalo girl I would Say still at heart like I don't think that I'll ever shake that um, even though I lived half in the city and half in the suburbs like I still feel like I'm so Buffalo so what are you gonna do um, so I get to Florida I got a job and um, this is about October 2003 and um, I started working at Target and I was also working at a social services um, organization part-time and um, I wasn't really gelling with either um, and so I got another job um, two months later Target I was like I love Target why don't I work at Target but no like I hated working at Target even though I love to shop there I hated to just be there and like have to be there to work like that was not cool at all so I um, got a job in December 2003 um, at another social services organization um, full-time and so that ended up being great um, you know perfect timing um, and I was working with this woman and um, she about maybe 15 16 years older than me I'm not sure I can't I don't know how her age you know like black women you never know because you look at them and you're like you look like 25 but you're really like 45 so <laughs> sometimes it's hard um but yeah so I can't remember I know she was like in her 40s or something and I'm in my 20s so okay so maybe about like 20 year difference or something but anyway that's not important um so she and I became friends and you know she's just kind of mentoring me and you know showing me around and helping me to learn things and so you know we were working nights together when we're you're working at night it's you know a lot of downtime like once you know everything's all settled and all the work is done so um we like chill and talk and stuff like that once everything's done and like do our notes for the day at the table and stuff <laughs> um memories uh so she started telling me about how like she has a son my age and i was like oh do you <laughs> because I'm totally like out here completely by myself no friends no nothing here and um, it was hard and um, sorry I still feel like I'm kind of nasally like I don't know like there's phlegm or something <laughs> sorry um, but anyway so um, she was telling me about her son and you know he was I think a year younger than me which I really didn't do younger people <laughs> but, I mean even people two and three years older than me weren't working out for me um so I really didn't want to go younger but considering I didn't have any other options at the time I was like well all right I'll meet your son so um I don't know I guess she called him and told him and then like he and I started texting and um old school texting like old sms like crazy not even like today's texting like it was horrible like this site was like horrible like I don't I don't even know but um so we started texting and then like she introduced us one night and um we just hung out and watched the movie and um so like over the course of like the next week or so like we just hung out and talked and stuff and I know it was like Valentine's Day and like we hung out one night and 
that was kind of like the night where we were like, okay, we're going to kind of like start seeing each other. Um, so it was, really <laughs> it was really cheesy and corny. And the only reason why I'm including him, because this is like, I mean, even though we were like talking for a good nine months or so, maybe, I don't want to say a year, maybe about like six to nine months. I mean, so it was significant. However, I mean, it didn't, it, it was really uneventful. Um, really, the reason why I'm doing this video is to just give you some background information from my last video to now and kind of catch you up to speed with where my life is. So, um, not to say that he wasn't significant. I did actually like him, but, um, so we were talking, um, just a couple <laughs> things about this situation that were not great was so I was 20 so he was 19 um so he was working and that was all fine and good you know hey you know you're working you have a car or something I don't know I think something happened with his car but I think he had one and so you know like at least he's like showing a little bit more initiative than swoopy whoopy um but he just liked to smoke weed too much and again with the whole like going back to swoopy whoopy like and him drinking and things like that it's so hard to like have a meaningful legitimate conversation let alone relationship with somebody that's always high like like that's just so not cute like i don't even understand how people do that i don't even understand how women you know sit up in their high all the time like i just i don't know like that's just so not attractive to me and you know just dating these guys that were doing this i mean we were really young 19 and 20 years old so i mean people did it you know some of some people in my friends um in my friend peer group whatever you know in high school you know they did it too so it wasn't at the time i wasn't thinking like oh my god red flag red flag you know like this isn't something i want to be involved in it was something i didn't i definitely didn't do it with him because i just like mm -mm. Like, I wasn't that person. <laughs> like, I'm not getting high all day. Like, why? And then I've always had really good jobs. I've always had really good jobs. Like, I mean, really good jobs, so I, f I feel like, for my age. And um, so I wasn't, you know, interested in anything like that. I wasn't trying to be worried about whether or not I was going to pass a drug test. Like, that's stupid to me. So anyway, so he was smoking a lot of weed, and it was just really stressful because... I'm like, you know, things were really good when they were really good type thing, but they were really bad when they were really bad. Um, and then we'd, you know, go times without talking to each other, and then we'd start talking again, and then, you know, it was just constantly back and forth. And I think that's probably the same thing for a lot of people that have dated people that, you know, are really young, and then also add in a substance abuse component. Um, but I mean, he was a good, nice guy, you know, things didn't work out and that's all fine and good because he was like, I don't know, like hanging out with some other chick and like got her pregnant and so that was pretty much the last straw for me and I started seeing somebody else, which is going to be not next week's video, but the video after that. Um, so you guys have to wait and see who that is. Um, I know people might be waiting to see like when my, um, husband's going to come into play. So, um, ex-husband is going to come into play. And, um, so maybe that's in two weeks. Um, so he and I, um, really weren't talking a lot at all um he did try to get me back at one point but i'm like dude like you have this whole chick who's like allegedly pregnant with your baby and it is just crazy um, so he basically had this whole girl that you know he had been seeing that was visiting there visiting a cousin or a friend or somebody um, for the summer like she didn't live in this town or whatever um, So, you know, she pops up pregnant and it was just I don't know. I feel like I've had the worst luck with guys getting pregnant on me <laughs> So stay tuned for that too um, 
when we were, I don't know, we were in a weird place, so I'm not going to fault him completely for it, but anyway, needless to say, this happened, and so it pretty much sealed our fate. Um, he had something go on that kind of shook him up a little bit and scared him straight with the whole smoking situation, um, so he ended up enlisting in the army, so he joined the army married the girl had the baby um i'm not gonna say whether or not the baby ended up being his because it's none of my business i wish i had a cup of tea though um so yeah and the thing that sucked about that was like <laughs> so you get your act together after <laughs> me and you stop talking and join the military, which is a good job. And, you know, I'm goal oriented, you know, so I appreciate somebody else that's goal oriented and um, ambitious and things like that. And so, you know, to this day, I'm pretty sure he's still in the army. And so that's about 2005 or so when he joined. So 13 years. So, I mean, that's really good. I mean, I think that, you know, I definitely give it to him from where I saw him at as a 19, 20 year old boy. <laughs> and now, um, we don't have any contact, of course, because, you know, the woman is always mad at you for, you know, cheating. You know, I don't know. I, I, I don't understand her logic at all and why we can't talk because, you were the other woman <laughs> in this scenario. Like, I was already here. <laughs> so, I don't really know why she's mad, but it is what it is. So, whatever. Um, so, we don't talk at all. Um, and they wound up going to Germany, and I was like, oh my god, I would have, like, loved to get stationed there with him. Like, ugh. So I was really kind of pissed at how that situation came about. I'm like, should I just wait a little longer? Should I have accepted the baby? Like, you know, if it was going to be his or not. Like, I don't know. All kinds of things go through your brain. But whatever. At the time, it didn't seem like it was, you know, a relationship I needed to be in. Um, but in retrospect, I would have wanted to go to Germany. <laughs> Nothing else. <laughs> could have left him there actually um but no he was a pretty decent guy so I'll give him that and um this video also was to <laughs> just bring up the fact that um don't introduce me to your family because they will absolutely love me and you will never get rid of me um he is a prime example of that um his family and i still chit chat and talk off and on we're all friends on social media you know we've hung out through the years his sister and me are pretty close you know we don't talk like all the time anymore we don't live in the same city but um i have a good relationship with his family and um and that probably adds to a little bit of the frustration of the girl um but what are you gonna do like i mean we have like a bond like me and his sister were i think like two or three years apart as well and um me and his mom were already friends from work so i mean i was like a member of the family and if you're like <laughs> if you're dating a guy that's got a black mama <laughs> like you're put to work like she straight had me picking up kids from daycare and you know just going here and going there and just doing different stuff and like will you go run this and will you go do this and will you go pick up such and such and will you go i'm like uh yeah like i felt like i was gonna be doing dishes in a minute like <laughs> but it was all cool you know like it was good um one really funny thing is that I, um, for April Fools, I had told them that I was pregnant. Don't do that, because obviously, like, they didn't think that it was April Fools, and, like, they were, like, planning our life out, and how I was going to move in, and, and like, because like, they felt like my mom was going to freak out, and you know, I was going to have to move in, and they were going to have to help us take care of a baby, and... So, it was, it was funny to me, <laughs> but whatever, I don't know, I guess they were pretty pissed. Um, 
isn't my fault. They should have realized it was April Fool's Day. Like, come on. Um, how gullible can you be? But, yeah, so it was a pretty decent experience. Um, like I said, being in Florida was different this time around from um, when I went a couple years before with my parents and I had a different mind frame so it was all good um, so one other big component in my life when I moved to Florida was my mom's rules that if you live under her roof that you have to go to church which I don't really agree with, and um, I'm gonna tell you why. I really feel like parents that try to force their kids to go to church end up like breeding like some resentment in them, like about religion and Christianity and what it means to be a Christian and everything. I think everything gets real distorted when you do that and so I'm not a parent but I feel like I'm a victim of you know this type of behavior um, so I started going to church um, with my mom to a church and I was like not even feeling I was like falling asleep um, so then I branched out on my own and I found a church and um, it was great I was completely happy there and um, you know, I actually encouraged Michael's um, sisters to go with me. I think we went to like a play one time there and like they come um, to church with me on Sunday. So, I mean, I really am that person that like you should have in your family. <laughs> like I'm that girlfriend that will like, you know, just be just so sweet and so helpful. That's why your family will never be able to get rid of me. Um, and then they'll, you know, constantly bring me up on Thanksgiving and Christmas, you know, whether you have a girl or not, I'm pretty sure they're gonna, you know, bring me up, like, if you only would have stayed with Reese, maybe you wouldn't be so frustrated with your current relationship, <laughs> um, but seriously, so, the situation with my mom, like, I found, like I said, I found a really good church, and, um, I was really grateful that I found it because I ended up getting baptized and um, so that was really exciting. So I was coming into my own in a lot of ways in Florida. Um, I got a job and um, a good full-time job. Um, I started going back to school, but that was like a couple years later. Um, found a good church that I really liked. I got baptized. I started reading the Bible more. And um, I just was like having a good foundation. So um, things were good. And um, you know, I'd like to say my relationship was good too, but I don't know. I, I think that that was really my curse, like from early on, is like just being cursed with bad relationships. But at the end of the day, it's um, their loss. So um, all the guys that um, it did work out with, I mean, I'm good right now. Um, you know back then it was the end of the world but um, I'm good so um, so like I said I really just wanted to give you guys a video to show you guys where I was in the first few months the first few years of me being in Florida and um, just give you guys a little bit of background on what was going on in my life you know and in my faith and things like that um, which I mean I really do feel like moving to Florida did help me a little bit better because I did find a church, I did get baptized, like I was kind of making strides. So um, I feel like this was important for me not to um, miss. Um, my next week's video is going to be switching gears just a little bit and it's going to be actually about my best friend. Um, I feel like my best friend relationship was really significant to my life and so I don't want to leave him out of my journey um, even though we didn't date um, but it's just a really good video that I think that you should not miss um, so if you haven't already please hit the subscribe button before you go and give my video a thumbs up as well I appreciate you guys for watching I'm so excited that I got a thousand watch minutes in three weeks like I think that's pretty good so <laughs> um but again thank you thank you thank you and i will see you guys next week